All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me today. So this is going to be my last stream before probably until August at this point. I'm going to be out of town. Uh, so yeah, welcome. Happy Friday. Uh, today, we're going to be continuing my work on my modem manager package as well as, oh, shit. Jimmy, thank you so much for the subscription. Uh, two months. I appreciate that. Enjoy your emotes. Starting to get some two-month subs now. It's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we're going to get back to this Moda Manager stuff. So when I left you all on the stream on Tuesday, was it Tuesday? Um, we had basically just started the package. And now in the past couple of days, I actually cranked out an exporter and started packaging it for NixOS. So I think the first thing we're going to do today is revise my pull request just a little bit because I got something kind of wrong. Uh, but then we'll get back to the Go code. So... If you want to package a Prometheus exporter for NixOS, this is actually should be a pretty good reference. Um, I suspect there are probably not too many NixOS users in here, uh, but I use it for my router and my server, so I'm packaging the exporter. Uh, basic idea is you expose your exporter in the NixOS native way. So they say like uh, Prometheus exporters, modem manager enable, and it'll actually figure out how to pull that package, install it. Uh, you can configure it a little bit. So, for example, you can configure, like, the port it listens on or the refresh rate. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. So, I actually got this working, and the way the NixOS tests work, this is pretty cool. So, what you do is you configure the exporter. You say, I want this exporter modem manager enabled, and I want to refresh its stats every 10 seconds. And then, I actually enable network manager and modem manager. Wait for modem manager to start. Wait for my Prometheus exporter to start and actually make sure I can curl it and pull a valid stat. So this is how NixOS tests work. It basically spins up a couple of VMs. It is uh, very cool stuff. <clears throat> so this works, but the problem is, is that the modem manager info stat is not privileged, but if you want to actually perform operations on the modem, such as fetching the network time, which we'll get to, you need special privileges. So in NixOS, the way this works is you want to be part of the network manager group. Uh, but unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to do that, but we actually got a suggestion here. So. I can't just specify group here because the exporter framework passes this option in a different way and it causes like a compilation error effectively. But the maintainer tells me the supplementary groups option should work. So I guess I'll take a look at that. So systemd supplementary groups. Zoom this in a ways. Supplementary groups equals... Uh, supplementary Unix groups, the processes are executed as, okay, space separated list of group names or IDs. Okay, so it looks like we just had to specify supplementary groups equals network manager, I would think. Um, I won't actually know if this works for sure until I get it running on my router with the modem because you actually need the modem in order to uh, verify that everything works, but yeah, let's do it. So uh, this is where I was. Left, this is where I left off. I need to turn off the dynamic user functionality. We actually need a fixed user here because it has to be part of the proper group. Um, actually, do we do we need dynamic user? Huh. I guess I'm thinking here. Like, if we don't use a dynamic a dynamic user, or if we do, it doesn't even matter anymore because System D will put it into the right group in theory. So. As long as you're part of the network manager group, Dbus will allow you to authenticate and perform <clears throat> operations on the modem. So I don't actually know if we need dynamic user or not. Um, I think I'm just going to leave this alone. It doesn't really hurt things. So I suppose we'll plumb it in this way. So supplementary groups equals, uh, did you say it was like a space separated list, right? So I think just network manager. And I'm pretty sure that's all we need to do. We can actually test this really quick. So this is this is pretty cool. I'll show you all how the NixOS tests work. Uh, so we are in the Nix packages repository here. Uh, if I do Nix build tests, uh, NixOS. Hey, off the band, welcome. Uh, NixOS tests, where does this live? Prometheus exporters. I don't actually know how to run just the one test. This is going to run a lot of tests, but it's okay. So if I run this, this will actually do all the stuff we just talked about as far as spinning up VMs for each of the exporters and running the tests. So... Ooh, I just started, uh, I dropped the frame due to rendering lag as soon as I started running those tests. <laughs> We've dropped uh, two frames so far. <laughs> pretty funny. So I'm pretty sure this will work as is, but there we go. So it's basically figuring out all the different dependencies it needs to run all these tests. It's compiling things and it's going to spin up the VMs. So... I don't know for sure how long this is going to take. It seems like there is some caching in play, but there's like... 
20 different exporter tests. So in theory, it has to run like 20 different times. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. I guess we'll find out in a sec here. <laughs> we were having a conversation in the performance channel on Gopher Slack about uh, screen sharing and such. And I was like, speaking of screen sharing, I'm about to go stream. And uh, I said I learned from Linus Tech Tips. I don't know. Linus is, uh, is a pretty funny guy. <laughs> All right, let's see. There we go. So it's now starting to, this all done with the little sparkles in the cake means that things are compiling successfully. So I haven't changed any of the other files. So I feel like this should just do the Delta, which is just the Emoto Manager stuff. But this is definitely further than we got yesterday because when I specified the group yesterday, it wouldn't compile at all uh, because of the group override with the NixOS default option. So I want to run this. I guess I could probably just push this and use the CI infrastructure because that's a little smarter and I don't know the command to do it locally, but I don't know. I'll give it a second. Let's see if the modem manager stuff pops up first. And if it doesn't, we'll go do something else for a while. There we go. Uh, APC BSD, that's another test I wrote, excuse me. So it's actually spinning up the individual VMs. So it's going to take a little bit. Okay, uh, let's let's go do something else. So we can go back to, let's see here. We'll go back to my modem manager project, I think. Or I guess I can show you all the, I can show you the Prometheus exporter I've got so far, because then you'll have more context as to what this is actually doing. Exporter. Right, uh, there are no tests yet. Uh, I know I broke one of my own rules, but I was just kind of in a hurry to get this published and try to get it packaged in NixOS before I uh, go on vacation and such. So uh, the basic idea is when you start up, we connect to Moto Manager via Dbus. This will determine if it's available. And if it is not, uh, actually what's pretty cool is that Dbus can do, or Systemd can do Dbus unit activation. So in theory, if modem manager is not running and I try to open a Dbus connection to it, systemd will start it. In my particular case, uh, I've got it set up in my NixOS configs so that modem manager is always running because I want the modem to be configured. Uh, that's the reason. That's the only way I can get out to the internet via LTE. So uh, when it starts up, we dial a connection to it. Gabriel Barry, thank you for the follow. We iterate each of the modems we find. So this basically like looks for the Dbus path and we'll iterate until we get a not found. Uh, for each modem, we start telling it to refresh its signal stats every five seconds by default. So modem manager does some caching. I don't know if that's because the operation is perhaps expensive on the modem or what, but with a five second window, we should be okay. Prometheus is usually going to scrape every 15 seconds, so it seems like it's probably okay to update every five. Once we do that, uh, we set up our Prometheus registry. We create this handler here, and this is where the, the magic happens. And we start listening on HTTP. So we're using my metrics light package. Again, just kind of an opinionated take on a minimal Prometheus, testable Prometheus client and such. Uh, we create all these const gauges. These are const metrics because they need to be generated on the fly per modem. And the idea being that if you have a modem that is connected or disconnected, uh, you won't get stale time series this way. So you, when you're writing an exporter pulling data from another system, you want to use const metrics. So we export a few different stats right now, such as info about the modem manager daemon itself, the modems, such as its device ID, firmware revision, model, etc. Uh, and then we have things like the current network time. Uh, this is a fun one. I'll tell you all what I found in a sec here. And then some LTE stats for now. So whenever we scrape, we do this const scraped function. We are getting the network time for each modem, which is getting the time from the cell networks. We can actually compare against what is on my machine versus what's in the cell network getting the signal stats, and then we iterate over the metrics and we collect them. So we collect things such as the modem info, network timestamp, et cetera. And these collection functions are doing the const metrics magic in the background. Let's go take a look really quick and see how the uh, tests are going. Oops, uh, wrong window. There we go. <clears throat> so I guess we're down to the black box exporter. Bind. APC. Okay, this is going to take a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. In theory, this should pass just fine. We'll we'll come back here in a little bit and we'll keep we'll take a look. But right now, it's actually spinning up the VMs. Like, you can see system D units and stuff passing by, which is pretty cool. So, uh, this is what we have so far. So, we are using just a couple of exported API calls, such as get network time and getting the signal. And then we'll have to jump over to the modem manager package. So...
where this is at thus far. Let's close everything else. Um, we'll talk about this. This is this network time stuff is pretty interesting. So these packages live at Moda Manager and Moda Manager Exporter. If you type exclamation point project into the chat, you can get direct links to these as well. Um, yeah. So the API we have thus far is this. Actually, now we can use the package go.dev. Sweet. Cool. So you can dial a connection to the modem, receive this client. The client tells you the modem manager's version. You can iterate the modems or fetch a modem by its index. So the iteration code is actually kind of clever. It just, uh, well, clever. It just fetches each modem using an iterating loop. And then whenever we get an is not exist error, we stop. Easy enough. But I figured this was a common enough use case where it's probably worth adding to the package. And of course, we have context plumbing throughout. So you can cancel any inflate operations at all, which is nice. Uh, the modem identifies some of the information about it. We have a bunch of different fields we can parse, but right now I've only done the index and string fields. We can add some other fields today to this for sure. Uh, we have calls such as getting the network time, getting the signal stats. And for signal, there are many different types of signal exposed, including things like GSM and CDMA. We're just doing LTE because that's all I care about, but ultimately it's trivial to parse the rest too. Uh, cool. So I'll, let me show you all what I was working on with the uh, network time. That was pretty interesting. No, oh, hey, so our modem manager test should have passed then. Nginx, Nextcloud, a lot of ends. Modem manager, there we go. So you can actually see here in the logs, uh, must succeed. So connection to 9539 succeeded. So we curled it successfully. So it appears that our PR works. So I can actually just stop these tests now because we know that it's fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and commit this and I will amend this actually. So amend. Force push. Cool. Uh, so let's go back to the NixOS stuff really quick. Um, I need to reply to my PR comment here. Uh, it went away. I I really prefer the the Garrett style reviews where comments don't just, aren't just like dismissed by themselves, like because they just went away now, right? What? Am I getting stale data? Hang on a sec. Okay, here we go. Updated to use supplementary groups and I left dynamic user equals false for now. I can't decide if I should leave the dynamic user as true or false because in theory, system D is giving you all the permissions you need, so it shouldn't really matter. But uh, I don't know. The problem is I can't I can't actually test this. I have to import this module from Unstable, which I can't do yet because it's not up there. And I'm not actually sure how to import my fork of Nix packages, but I'm sure there's a way. I bet I could probably just do it by adding a new channel or something. I don't really want to go through the effort. So update to use supplementary groups. Thanks for the suggestion. So now this is pushed again. I can actually tell this of morg bot to run the tests for the uh, Prometheus exporters modem manager. This will just run the test we ran locally, which we already confirmed works, but this just does it in a uh, small contained way. So there we go. Uh, cool. So I think we're probably done with the Nix OS bits for now. So I'll close that out. Actually, let's close out. Uh, I got a few VS Code windows here. We can close out the Nix packages stuff. And we'll close the Prometheus stuff for now too. So this was pretty interesting. If you want to fetch the network time from a modem, uh, actually, I think I can show you on the router itself. Uh, which window do I want right here? Yeah, so, oh, so it works now, of course. So what is happening here is the AT interface, so the low level serial interface of the modem has a call that lets you get the current time. And you can either set that yourself or you can set it to be delivered from the network. So for me, in my case, I definitely want to deliver from the network. So we're doing that. So this was pretty strange. The way it's returning the time, I guess I can just print this or something. So T. So command mode manager. So whenever we cross compile for, or remember we not cross compile, it is x86. Whenever we compile for NixOS, we need to disable CGO because NixOS has libc all packed in in various like tidy ways. So in this case, it's fine. Um, just for development, it's easy just to disable CGO. So oh, that's annoying. I had the timestamp. Check this out. So this is returning 2027.17. Okay, 160907 
in Eastern time zone, but this is not the current time at Eastern time. This is so my system clock is returning this. And there is a little bit of skew between my system clock and the uh, network time. And I'm not exactly sure why, because I'm synced to NTP. So in theory, it should be correct. But this is returning a UTC timestamp, but with an Eastern time zone. So in order for me to work around this, I actually had to pull apart the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second, and interpret this time as UTC, and then apply the zone. And I really have no idea why, but the thing is, is that this isn't modem managers doing, or this isn't Go's doing. This is the modem returning this output in raw format. So I don't exactly understand the deal here, but when I was returning the, uh, excuse me, when I was returning this time parse manually, I actually saw that my time was off by like four hours. So let me go to Prometheus really quick. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to need a bookmark, aren't I? Copy. There we go. So, uh, RS, no, network timestamp. So this says that the current time is whatever. Uh, but my system time or the Prometheus time, uh, one, five, nine, five, something, something. Okay. Whatever. Uh, zero, one, one, six, one. It's hard for me. I can't put these in the same graph right now. I'd have to make a Grafana dashboard, which I haven't yet. But basically, I guess the story is like, I noticed the time skew was like four hours off and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. There's no way. And it just turned out it's because the modem's returning the time in a weird format. So in order for me to handle this property properly, I had to do this. So beats me. Uh, anyway, in which context can one use Seago? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean. So Seago is used to bind Go programs to C programs. So for example, like in Go by default, I believe the... Uh, the DNS lookups are done using Seago libraries and such. Uh, some of the low-level system functions, such as the fetching users and stuff, are done via Seago. But Go in general does not need Seago for many things because it can do system calls by thunking directly into assembly. Um, but in this particular case, like if I if I don't disable Seago before I build this and send it to my server or my router, uh, it just won't work. It can't execute. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, so that catches us up to where we are now. So what else can we do today? I want to implement more methods. I want to parse more data, I think. So I guess going back to the modem data, this structure can have a lot more information. So we probably want to fetch some of that. So this is where we parse the values from the map. Basically, Dbus gives us this map of strings, which is like your keys, and then Dbus variant, which is effectively empty interface. So I have to do type assertions, uh, which is what this value parser type is doing. So if I go to default here, we will see what else is available from the modem. So log print f percent q percent pound v. We'll get a little more data. K v. Uh, okay. So now, whenever we parse this, any fields that are not uh, parsed already but my code will be pulled out. So let's uh, make this window smaller. Right, so we got a bunch of info here. Actually, I want to get rid of the... Let's use format. I don't want the timestamps. They just take up space. Okay. Still, still messy for sure, but... So we have things here such as supported modes. Uh, this is, I believe these are like tuples of some sort of like modem manager enums. So we're going to parse those. There is the ports, which tells you that the modem is connected via uh, CDC WDM0. This is the series, no, this is the character device that you issue MBIM commands to. So there is a couple of different protocols you can use to control modems like out of band. There are things such as QMI, which is Qualcomm. And then there's MBIM, which is the standard uh, format. So I'm using MBIM. So the MBIM port is CDC WDM0. There's TTY USB0, TTY USB1. I don't remember what zero is for, but one is the AT device. And then there's also WWDP whatever system D name. This is the actual Linux network interface. So I do want to parse this field. This would be useful. So we'll do that. We have things such as the phone number of the modem. Uh, this doesn't exactly make sense to me because it's on project Phi. and this is a data only sim. So I'm not actually sure how it can have a phone number. Maybe that's just something that everything has. Uh, we have the other related Dbus objects such as the sim, which we will parse and the bearer as well. And the bearer is the, uh, the packet service device that actually shuffles packets between the Linux kernel uh, networking stack and the LTE network, I believe. Uh, signal quality. 
nine. Oh, it's just the, it's like a percentage or something. I have really bad cell service in my house, apparently. Uh, it works, but it seems like the, the values are not good. Heave, welcome. Thank you for the follow. So let's start with the, let's start with the ports field. Let's just do that first. Uh, I like doing these alphabetized to keep things more sane. So elemental P, R, there we go. Okay. Ports. Uh, log print line. We'll do format print line. Print the value. Right. So this AAV stuff, uh, this is the, like, the debus signature. So I think what this is saying is this is an array of array. It's an array of an array of, what's V? Is V, I think, variant or variable? So you'll see here, this is actually, like, tuples with a string first and integer second, which is probably a uint32 because it's debus. So we're going to have to use some fun Go stuff because arrays of different types don't work in Go. This is all empty interface. So fun, right? Um, I don't think this type really makes sense to parse as part of the value parser. So perhaps we'll create a special purpose parsing function. Um, huh. How do I want to do this? We're going to need to write a function to deal with this data. So I think we'll probably just for now, uh, instead of incorporating this in the, I guess I could put it in the value parser. I mean, it's kind of weird, but I guess this is unexported code, so it's probably okay. Let's uh let's pursue that option. So ports. Uh ports is going to return oh roughly type port struct. And a port looks like it's defined as a name, the name of the device, and then an enum, which is some kind of type. So name string type int, this is gonna be some kind of type we're gonna copy from Moto Manager. Actually, if I go to the docs, uh, we can pull up, let's see here, try to grab a reference, there we go. Let's close a few windows here, don't need those anymore. Is this still going? It is, okay. So if you look here, we have the dbus interfaces. So right now we're looking at modem. Uh, we're looking at the properties of the modem ports so ports is an array of string and unsigned integer pairs uh port name or path and the integer port is given as mm modem port type values so this is an enum okay so oh wow that pasted really badly uh unknown net okay so i think these are actually starting at one this is like one indexed which i don't really like so uh, net, definitely the WWP0 device. This is my network interface. This is definitely type 2, so that's correct. So uh, type port type int const. Uh, let's see here. So net. See, I used to like prefix all of my constants with like port type net, but I feel like this gets kind of nasty quickly, so I kind of like to remove that, but... I don't know, modem manager, port type net. I guess it's fine. Port type. And actually, I suppose we could use IOTA here. So if we do underscore port type equals IOTA, then we have port type net, uh, port type AT, shoot, port type QCDM, GPS. QMI, again, QMI and MBIM. So we're using MBIM mode. So I would expect that uh, CDC WDM zero is probably equal to seven. So zero, one, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's see here. So port type unknown is one. Port type. Type unknown. This is odd. So we have underscore for IOTA, which is the zero... GPS, port type QMI, port type MBIM, and then audio, huh? I have no idea how audio would work. Anyway, uh, so those are our enums now. So we need to parse, actually, I guess we can just directly type, type assert, 
or we're not gonna be able to type assert. We're gonna be able to type convert once we do an assertion from the anti-interface type. So we to interpret this structure, uh, we're gonna have to again make a value parser uh, method type port type. So ports is going to return an array of port slice of port ports parses. Wow, my typing is terrible today. Oh, uh, ports parses the value as a slice of ports. Okay. So the way this value parser type works is I do this because I want my call sites to be more concise. So we take a value and then we call it, we try to interpret it as a string or ports or an integer or whatever else. And if there's an error, that error is returned here. So that way all of these lines can just be a key assigning to a value and then parsing it. So it's very simple. So the idea here is to make the call sites as concise as possible. So if there's a previous error, we return nil. Um, so we're gonna need to interpret this as, wow, yeah, this is a, it comes in as an empty interface, but it's actually, the type of this, I think is gonna be like a slice of, slice of empty interface. I think it's gonna be a slice of empty interface, which also contains slices of empty interface. So let's uh let's do ourselves a favor here. Spew dump v. Uh, okay, it doesn't compile. Ah, yeah, we got to do this. So value is not a ports list. So this is unclear. We're gonna return nil for now because we're not actually using this yet either. Dbus variant. Ah, how helpful. <laughs> I don't want the dbus variant. I want the raw value. Oh, I guess I could do uh, value. This gives me the empty interface. So, right. So we have a slice of slice of empty interface, and then within each one we have a slice of empty interface. Yeah, this is a uh, this is the kind of stuff you dream about working with with Go, right? <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, starting out, we expect our empty interface to be type asserted to a slice of slice of empty interface. So we have our slice. And then we iterate the slice and we would expect that each member is also a slice of empty interface, which it already is. So we need to check that all of them have two fields and then convert the first field to a string and the second field to a uint32. Fun stuff, huh? Uh, if len s not equals to um, vp error, here's that new invalid ports list slice turn nil. And then we need to do a type assertion for both. So we need the string field, so the name as well as the type. Okay, colon equals s0 type assert. Not okay. Uh, VP error equals errors.new invalid ports list name. Invalid port name string nil and then we'll copy and paste this because we have to do another type assertion as well uh, s1 uint32 invalid port type type uint32 and now that we have this we can actually create the output structure so ps make a wow oh, i'm gonna stand up i'm just not feeling it today Ah. I just get kind of antsy sometimes. I just want to stand up, you know? There we go. How are you all doing today? Chat's kind of quiet. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, is that a common pattern setting the error on the struct instead of returning it as an arg? So it depends, right? I mean, ultimately, this is a this is a 
uh, Learn Addict, thank you for the follow. This is a trade-off. So in this particular case, I'm doing this because I want these to be as concise as possible. So if I return the error directly here, then I'd have to have an error return for all of these or possibly do the check in line, and I don't want to do that. So the idea is we're doing the parsing and storing the error in the struct, so that way we can defer the error check until the end of the block. So if it fails, we just return the zero value, which is fine, and then we return the error later. So this is a pattern you can use to make some pattern or some things more concise. I actually did a blog originally about this. Let's see here. Uh, byte parsing APIs. I think this is this is when I first started doing it in my Netlink package, right? I think this is the one. Yeah, because I had the same trouble here. So I started using the iterator API. This is exactly where I started using this pattern was my Netlink package. So check out that blog I just posted. That'll be, that'll be a good reference too. Uh, but yes, this is definitely a somewhat idiomatic way of handling this sort of thing. So there's actually a Go blog about this topic as well. Like if you're writing a series of things and you don't really care if, you know... You don't really care if uh, you get an error in there. You just want to do a series of operations to check the error later. This is a pattern you would use. Uh, yeah, no problem. Happy to happy to help out. Happy to explain my thought process, you know. So now uh, m, oops, wow, m ports equals vp ports. So the modem now needs a ports field. Uh, so we're going to make a slice of ports, 0, len, ss. So we allocate with length 0, but capacity of the slice. So that way we can append directly into this, but only allocate memory once. Because we know exactly how much memory we need. So we allocate it up front, and then we can just go ahead and slot the items right in. Which is pretty nice. So append a port uh, with name of name and type. of. We're going to type convert this. Robinette, welcome. Thank you for the follow. We'll do a conversion from UN32 uh, because the UN32 values have the same... Um, the the enum we created here has the same values. So when we convert the, the UN32 to our port type integer, they will now have these symbolic names such as network or AT or etc. So, PS. Now I think this will work. Uh, yeah, no errors at least. So we need to dump this data in our program here. So this is a little test program I've been writing just to quickly test things without having to actually uh, deploy my exporter or something. So spew dump m ports. We can go ahead and get rid of all this code for now. We don't need it anymore. And there we go. So you can see we have the devices successfully parsed now. So we have CDC WDM0. Uh, type 7, which I'm sure is the uh, MBIM type. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, perfect. So now the, the next step would be to create a uh, stringer, a stringer enum for this for sure. So type that wrong. I can never remember how to do this. I always have to copy, copy it from the uh, docs. I guess it's easy enough. Uh, type equals port type. Okay. So this stringer tool will actually generate methods for us for, uh, it'll generate a string method for this enum. So watch this. Uh, go generate. Yeah. Go generate. Okay. And then we compile it again. And then we run it here. And now you'll see we actually have port type MBIM QCDM AT net. Done. I don't actually know what that QCDM port is for. I'm familiar with the purpose of the other three, but I have no idea what QCDM even is. I guess let's find out. Uh, port type, port QCDM. Qualcomm proprietary protocols. Yeah, it sounds about right. QCDM. Interesting. So QCDM is like an alternative for, oh, we now use extensively in modem manager for controlling CDMA devices. Interesting. So this is for CDMA maybe. Huh. Neat. I'm getting some activity on Twitter. Oh, I see a large data bank tweeting out. He's streaming today as well. So we're going to be rating large data bank uh, sometime after three. 
Uh, 3 p.m., so probably two and a half hours from now is about when we'll wrap up the stream, I suspect. Uh, what's going on here? <laughs> My apologies. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, back to it. So now we have our type. I can actually... What is Stringer? Stringer has some kind of argument for putting all the types in one file, too. Stringer h... Uh, dash output. Ah. Uh, output uh, string stack go. I just want to keep all the string types in one file if we can, because otherwise it gets messy having, like, a uh, port type string file and stuff like that. So I suspect we're going to have several of these. Go generate... So now we have strings that go and this actually oops this actually generates uh some pretty strange code but this is actually rather efficient uh by a uh <laughs> by packing all of these into the same string and then like sub slicing it like this uh apparently this is more efficient than a switch statement so who knew <laughs> pretty wild uh so now we need to document this and let's see here i guess we'll move this to a different the other uh, client file Uh, a port type is the type of a port device. A device's control ports. Control ports, maybe? What's the terminology I'm looking for here? That doesn't seem right. Control port. Modem port. Modem port, okay. Type of a modem port. Uh, possible port type values for Godoc. A port is a modem port. Seems easy enough, I suppose. Uh, right, so now we are successfully parsing ports. Uh, we need to write tests. Right? Right, right, right. So there's no coverage on this at the moment. Yes, there's not. Okay. Uh, let's go full screen. Uh, value parser test. So basically the way I'm testing this stuff is I write tests that provide a valid output in the context of the API. So we'll actually pack a structure in the same format. Excuse me. Uh, we'll pack a structure in the same format the modem returns so that way we can parse it successfully. But also I have a test here that will test for all the possible error cases. So if the type is wrong for some reason, we verify we get an error, right? I guess I can remove the bad prefix. These are all bad. Everything in this test is an error. So hang on a sec. Uh, ports uh, type. Dbus make variant. Uh, so anything that's not a slice of slice of empty interface. Okay. So the idea is here, we're invoking functions on the value parser in order to make it return an error. And we verify that no matter what we do with it, it should always return an error in this case because we're just testing different cases. So uh, VP ports. So we'll try and parse the ports for a variant uh, one, which is not a, um, not a slice of slice of empty interface, right? Uh, we can, for a little bit, do this. Right. Okay, uh, I'm gonna make this smaller for a little bit so I can just uh, not to um, hurt my eyes trying to read all the screen wrap and stuff. Let's see here, so ports type. Okay, so now we have that first case covered. So this type assertion fails, that's good. Uh, now we need an invalid subslice. So uh, ports slice. So we're going to create a slice of slice of interface where the element within it has the wrong length. So I think this will work. Yes. So we're creating a slice of slice of interface. I know that all the brackets are confusing, but this is basically an empty object. I guess I can make it more clear by putting something in here. So. Uh, let's see here. The type doesn't matter because we don't check the type yet. 
So, food. That's fine. Right. So, now we have a slice. It's a valid slice of slice of interface, but it has the wrong number of values inside of it. It needs two values. And then those values have to... Uh, those values have to... Hang on a sec. Slice of slice of interface. So we have a slice, and then within the slice we have... Oh, shoot. I'm not initializing the inner slice, am I? I'm confused. Let's write another test case really quick. I'll, I'll try and explain what I'm thinking of, but uh, port's name. So... Shouldn't we have a R? Okay, there we go. So this is correct. So these are these are tuples. Um, so the port name needs to not be a string. So we'll make it so this is UN thirty. We'll make uh UN thirty two. Just one. So this will be a boolean or something like some other bad type. So this gives us the invalid port name. And now we'll do the port type as well. I hope this makes sense. Whenever you get into like this empty interface territory, things get really uh, nasty, of course. But ultimately, we have no choice because Dbus is returning types to us that Go has no good representation for. Like, you can't create a slice with different types in Go without uh, using empty interface. So, is what it is. Uh, ports type. So the port name is foo. But the port type is now going to be true. So the type is a boolean instead of a UN32. Okay, and now we've hit every error case. Great. So, uh, back to the client. We need to write tests for the success case. I guess we can just do... Let's see here. So, I already have a test this test right here so this is all data copy from my modem basically we're building the map internally and swapping out the contents of the function call so that way we can parse this data um, from the dbus variants without actually interacting with dbus because it's a pain it's a pain in my ass <laughs> so uh ports is a dbus variant uh let's copy let's copy the structure we just had that's going to be useful i think uh, yes Right, invalid port type UN32. Yeah, okay, so this is good. Um, so we're gonna have, let's see here, so CDC WDM0 uh, is going to be a M MBIM port, right? Yeah, uh, port type MBIM, okay? But it's not a valid UN32, so we have to coerce it. It's convert it, not coerce, convert. I always think of, uh, what is it, like type casting and stuff, but in Go it's not casting, it's conversion. Like you can do unsafe casting, but otherwise it's always a conversion. There are no casts in Go uh, that are not unsafe, I believe. Uh, ports. So we have a slice of ports, and within there we have type is MBIM, and the name is CDCWDM0. Wow, I can't type for... Can't type at all today. Okay, the test passes. Uh, we are successfully parsing the data, which is great. Uh, let's add the other ports as well. So, or at very least just a, a couple different types. So, uh, TTY USB zero, QCDM, USB one is AT. It was actually pretty funny yesterday. I uh, I had to, when I wanted to confirm my theories with the clock skew issue, I had to stop modem manager so that way I could log into the, or I could connect to the AT interface of the modem so I could actually issue it commands manually. Uh, but the problem was is that uh, because my Prometheus exporter was running, every time Prometheus scraped the exporter, it would restart modem manager because modem manager is activated by dbus calls and the exporter is making dbus calls over and over again. <laughs> So I, I kept getting kicked off, and I'm like, you know, what the hell? What's the deal here? And I realized I had to stop my Prometheus exporter, too, because otherwise Modem Manager would just keep getting restarted. <laughs> it was pretty funny. 
uh yeah this horrific name is the network port cool can basically copy these to some extent and i don't like unkeyed struct literals because they will make your life hard later if you ever have to add or remove fields Finally set up Prometheus Grafana, C advisor, node exporter, my NAS the other night, the rabbit hole begins. Nice. I hear uh I hear C exporter does not provide very good metrics, or they're not idiomatic. Um there was talk at one point about some of us Prometheus folks like writing a new one, but it never ended up happening. I guess not serious talk, perhaps, but we had discussed it. Cool. Uh this seems to work. Yeah, having Prometheus at home is amazing, though. Would recommend for sure. It's helped me catch so many, like, problematic uh, issues with my network and stuff. Like, I can find problems before, you know, before other people can and stuff, so. You don't know, you grabbed some off-the-shelf dashboards, didn't even look at the metrics directly, gotcha. Yeah, I hear the I hear the cardinality problem is, like, or the cardinality explosion is uh, pretty big, you know. All right, so... Let's see here. Uh, ports data is packed in a slice of tuple slices with different data types. So unfortunately, we have to use empty interfaces and type assertions. So the data, I just want to leave a reference here. So uh, TTY USB 0, 1, TTY USB 1, or WN 0, 2, etc. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of amazing, you know, like other languages, this would be no problem, right? But with Go, you have to do all these type assertions. It's just... Uh, unfortunate but ultimately this is you know the the price we pay for type safety um i'm good with it you know you write this code once and then never have to think about it again right so i've got test coverage on the whole thing i don't i'm not worried about it cool uh let's commit what we have so far okay um I should leave a link to Moda Manager as well to this uh, this enum right here. Taken from your new laptop shipped today too. Woo, nice. How would you get? I do not have a personal laptop at the moment. Um, I had a Dell XPX 13 from like 2013, but I gave it to a friend who was doing like a coding boot camp and needed a new machine. Uh, so I actually do not have a laptop at the moment. I have my work laptop, but I'm at my desktop so much anyway. Like, I just prefer to work here. Okay. Um. Oh, we need to get rid of that uh, empty case as well. No default. Stringer apparently doesn't do the substitution if you're doing go run main.go only when build is the binary. Any idea why? Uh, so if you do go run dot, actually, so the problem is you're only running the main file, so you're only telling, giving it the one file. So I think if you do go run dot, it will do all the go files in that directory. Or go run star.go, something like that. One of one of those two should work. I, I always forget exactly what the syntax is, but... Go run files is super unintuitive. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. I've, I've made that exact same mistake so many times. 
I think we left a spew in somewhere. Yeah, here. So. I don't want that in my go mod. Okay. Uh, all the go files. So. Modem. I can't type at all today. Like, I'm, like, making so many typos. It's ridiculous. I have no idea why. Ah. I'm, like, a little, like, jittery for some reason. I don't know. Uh, modem manager add port parsing. Modem port parsing. Yep. Okay. Uh, cool. That's one data structure down. So we need to do more now. So what else do we want to fetch from this modem? What can it give us? There are different network types, but in my case, I only care about LTE. So I'm not really motivated to fetch things like GSM or CDMA. Um, hmm. I guess let's add another default case and see what else we can fetch. So format, def percent. I guess I could have done like a partial commit and not committed this portion, but yeah, it's fine. Okay, uh, key value, yeah, right. And a new line, of course. Okay, bearers. I do want to look at the bearer and the sim stats. Power state, that seems like a good one to parse too. There's a bunch of UN32s in here, which I think are like bit masks and such. So we should probably add UN32 parsing code. That'd be easy, an easy win. Drivers is a slice of strings. Current modes. Maximum active bearers. So the data we're parsing here, actually, you can see the output. So if I do mmcli-m0, uh, let's see here. So if we take a look at this, like this actually shows you all of the data we're parsing from Modem Manager right now, but in the uh, in a formatted way. Like, see, we just parse these ports. You have the primary port, stuff like that. Um, Plug-in, device. Like, we, we're parsing a lot of these fields as is. So I guess it's really just a matter of seeing what else is useful here. So... Things like the supported bands, it's like, eh, I don't know. But the sim and the bearer stuff, let's take we'll take a look at the APIs in a sec here and see what's available. But or things like the power state, we definitely want to parse as well. We want to know if the modem is uh you know connected to the cell network, right? So that's probably that's probably a good place to start, honestly, is the the modem state. Uh let's see here. This is really hard to read. State. Is an I. It's not a U. So U for DBus is U N32. What's an I? I have no idea actually. Um DBus data types. Does that just mean it's signed instead of unsigned? DBus U is U N32. DBus I N32. Why? Why do we have to differentiate between <laughs> Why, 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 why? Okay, so signed versus unsigned integers, okay. I mean, honestly, I feel like for my Go code, I probably just want to interpret everything as untyped integer or unsized integer anyway. So maybe I'll make something that just kind of type puns the uh, uint32s and int32s into just int because I don't really care. Anyway, uh, let's write some more parsing code. Floats are different for sure, but for ints, int parses the value as an integer. Int parses the value as an int, but also accepts uint32 and int32 values. Keep it simple. So let's see here. So switch 
We're gonna do a type switch here. So switch v colon equals vp v type uh, case. So for uint32, we return int of v. For int32, we return int of v. Default uh, format error f. Value is not a valid integer. We'll send the type as well because that'll be convenient, I think. Cool. Um, so maybe I shouldn't do the end thing because I think dbus always uses the fixed size integers. So parses the value as parses the value. Parses a an int32 or uint32 value as a go int. Cool. So those are the types that we can see right now. What else is there? In 64x. Interesting. I guess I should bookmark this page. I'm debating, uh, well, I'm debating if it's okay to interpret things like int64 as just int as well, because for example, if somebody's running this on a 32-bit system, then we'll lose data, right? So maybe we'll make int, and then we'll make int64 for the explicitly bigger ones, but for things like int32, uint32, int16, we don't care, we just want uh, we just want the native size integer, I think, probably. So, anyway, um, let's see here. Write a test. Int dbus make variant. This is now a float. Int. Okay. There we go. Now uh, we need to parse data with it. So we have things like the, the different enums, right? So I, you, I, I can tidy this up a little bit, one sec. Um, yeah, I see, so you, you, O is for an object. That's an object path type, I know that. You, you. So the types I'm seeing are all U's, and then there is that one I, right? Where was that? Yeah, state's an I, and it's not typed for some reason. That's so weird. So I don't actually think we have any N64s or anything in here. It's all N32 and UN32, so I think we're actually fine with what we have. So uh, let's parse the state. So case state. And state equals VP int. Int. Uh, Matt, just curious, is this part of the company you work for or your own open source work? This is my own open source work. I have not done any Fastly work on stream. Um, <clears throat> if I were presented the opportunity to do so, if we were working on a project that was open source, I would happily do so. But at the moment, everything I'm doing for Fastly is proprietary. So uh, I do exclusively my own work. So it's all my code. Uh, state is, I'm sure, going to be an enum of some sort as well. So, you're off to, yeah, I'm off work today. Yep, just uh, off work, about to about to be out of town for a little bit, so I figured I would get in one more stream, you know. Feeling motivated. This is another enum. Oh, wow. Modem, state failed, state unknown, initializing locked. Yeesh. Unknown, failed, initializing. Uh, okay, well... How do I want to do this? Uh, thanks for your time to stream. Yeah, no problem. I'm always happy to always happy to share my work. You know, 
I stream this stuff because this, these are things I want to do anyway, and being able to do it and show people is just interesting to me, right? So, state. We're going to need a state type now. Uh, port type state. Type state int. We're going to need more files in a sec here too. So, const. Uh, let's see here. So, state equals iota. So, state failed. Lots of states. Anyway, uh, state failed. It's also state uh, unknown. Initializing. That's hard to spell. Locked. Disabled. Disabling. Enabling. Disabled, disabling, enabling, enabled. That's a weird ordering. I feel like it should be disabled, disabling, enabled, enabling, but it's not. Enabling, enabled, searching. I'm looking at my different monitor right now because it's just easier to see all these uh, at once. Disconnecting, connecting, connected. It's all of them, okay. Uh, why not NeoVim? Why not any editor, right? So for me, I, uh, I used to use Vim, but I use VS Code now. I never really found myself to be a very good Vim power user. Uh, I think it's a cool editor. I think that if you, if, you know, if you have can master something like Vim or Emacs, you know, clearly you can be very productive. Uh, for me, frankly, I don't like having to configure things to my every need. Like I'm happy with something that works pretty well out of the box. So I'm really happy with VS Code overall. I just feel no reason to switch. Uh, a state is the state of the modem. A modem. <laughs> We're working with some PHP right now. Only a 578 megabyte allocation for a page load. Yikes. Uh, my Go programs, I think the, the, the heap size is generally like tens of megabytes, maybe. So that's, uh, it was still pretty big, you know, whatever. But that's, uh, that seems like a lot for PHP, especially. <laughs> I used to do PHP a while ago. Possible state values taken from Cool. Uh, we can convert that directly to a state. Where is that code? Yeah, see this file's getting a little long now. I definitely wanna clean this up a little bit. But it's okay for the time being. There we go. Uh, coerce it directly to a state, or convert it directly to a state. Uh, we need to go generate again because now we have a new string type. Okay. So you go enabled zero run. Right. Uh, sec. Spew dump m. There we go. Uh, state disconnecting. Really? Why is it? It's not disconnecting, is it? State connected. I think I must have got the ordering wrong. One sec. That's not right. Okay. Uh, so failed. Unknown. Initializing, locked, disabled, disabling, enabling, enabled, searching, registered, disconnecting, connecting, connected. I got it right. Clearly something is amiss here because my modem says connected in the UI. It's not disconnecting. So I'm like off by two or something. That's weird. This one doesn't start at zero, does it? That would still be an off by one. That would imply connecting. Disconnecting. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. What am I doing wrong? Um, so the raw state value it's giving me is connect. There's disconnecting. 
Maybe there's some caching involved? I mean, it shouldn't be disconnected. State connected, power state on. I guess let's go look at the motive manager code, maybe. Um, let's see here. Usually a good way to find it. Come on, give me GitHub. There we go. Chromium. Okay. MM. Uh, state. State. There we go. Failed is negative one. What? Okay, so off by two. That's weird. Okay. Um, ow. I guess that explains it. Uh, Iota. State equals Iota minus one, right? Does that work? Invalid array index, shoot. Oh, it's because I uh, regenerate. Go generate dot. Connected, there we go. Okay, so that's correct. That's odd. Why would port type start at, hang on a sec. Port type, not in here apparently. So some of these enums start at zero, but that one starts at negative one. That doesn't make any sense, why? I've never seen an enum start at negative one. All right, uh, well, uh, you were just looking at a project that needs help with Modem Manager, GitHub. Hmm. If it's a Go project, I guess I don't have any context here. I'm not an expert with Modem Manager by any means. I'm just developing a C project. Yeah, I'm developing a Go client for Modem Manager. Um, so unfortunately I can't help with like C stuff or like this appears to be some kind of driver. Um, I just don't know enough. Driver for modems, okay. Shape of the kernel interfaces. Yeah, unfortunately I'm coming at this project for the kernel module. Yeah, unfortunately I'm coming at this from a different angle. Uh, for me, I'm exclusively consuming the modem manager data because I want to build a Prometheus exporter, which I actually already have deployed, but uh, I am want to build out more data, so. Unfortunately, uh, nothing I can do at the moment. So. Port type unknown. Let's take a look at this again really quick. Oops, I don't want my personal browser here. Uh, port type unknown. The manager. Port type. Type unknown. Yeah, it's so weird how they, uh, it's so weird how some of these enums start at zero and some start at one, some start at negative one. I have never seen that before. Why? <laughs> Why? Why would you do this? <laughs> so this one explicitly does start at one. Okay. Um, this one. I'll just do this, I guess. Make it more clear. Anyway, need to regenerate the constants. No values defined. Ah. Cool, that works. Excellent. So now we can see the modem is connected. So this would be a good thing to expose via Prometheus as well. So when the modem is... Uh, in a different state for a certain period of time, I can write an alert. <laughs> okay, well. Let's see here. So do we have test coverage for this yet? We need to parse these types now. So 
Uh, the state enum. This will be an easy test, actually. I think state was actually signed, wasn't it? It was actually the uh, signed in 32 and not unsigned, I believe. Yeah, because it has the stupid negative value. Why? Why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I don't. I don't get it. I really don't understand. State connected. Let's run the tests. Yep. Modem is connected. Okay. Um, I think we're about good to commit this. We don't have any UN32 parsing code yet, I don't think, but that's okay because we'll add it shortly. Just cut this out really quick. Uh, all the Go files. If you are a C programmer, why would you ever start your enums at negative one? I've, I've never seen that before. Maybe there's some historical reason. Maybe it's like something in the modem firmware. I don't know, but that's, that's so odd. Negative one is often applied for failure or invalid. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm used to that in, like, CLI or, or, like, you know, system call error numbers and such, but as an enum value, I've never seen that before. I, I don't know. It's just that it strikes me as so strange. Like, I, I'm so used to, like, zero indexed enums. Like, the fact that the one started with one was also odd, but the fact that the this one starts with negative one just seems so strange to me. Int v, int v. Modem manager, add modem state person. Cool. What is anything but an enumeration of possible values? Uh, yeah, it's true. I'm gonna grab some water. I'll be back in a sec. Oh, wait, hang on. Did my stream die? No. Weird. Okay, I got a network error in uh, the stream manager here. Okay, we're good now. I don't know how long it's been. Anyway, uh, BRB. All right, we're back. Let's roll. So we got the state parsing done. Uh, what else can we do? More data. More, 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 more. The power state probably could be a good one too. Um, I guess we could also add these to Prometheus and show something a little different on stream. Bearers, modes, signal quality. I have no idea how the signal quality is calculated and also like it'll tell you if it's like a cached value or not, which is very strange. Hmm. Power state, that'd be a good one. Capabilities, IP families, bearers, supported bands. Well, I think the power state is definitely one we want because we want to know if the modem's at like full power. State failed reason. That'd be a good one too. Where is... I lose my tab? Yeah, I think I did. One sec. I concur. <laughs> Indeed. Indubitably. I bought this uh, super cheap mic arm when I got my setup. It was like a thirty dollar mic arm or something, and it's kind of it's kind of iffy. I feel like it's gonna end up like giving out, and I'm just gonna have to buy a more expensive one. But yeah, what are you gonna do? Which what was I looking at? Modem properties, right? State failed reason. Why the modem is in a failed state? Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Um, failed reason. Sim missing. Sim error unknown. Interesting. Road or blue mic stands are the best. Yeah, I was looking at road stuff, actually. 
but I guess I'll have to look around because I just got this. Uh, I mean, I know mic stands are all pretty standard and stuff, but I bought this cheapo something something, you know. Also, I wish I had gone for the longer model because this is actually like fine for streaming, but if I want to like sit back in my chair or something, like it doesn't really go all the way. So. <clears throat> Power state, yeah, we do want this. So unknown, off, low, on. Good enough. So P O W case. Power. <laughs> you use a Yeti because XLR mics are fucking expensive. I mean they can be, but I got my interface and my mic and the gear with it for like 350 bucks. I mean, I know that's like not cheap, but like considering I work from home full time and I wanted to do something like this anyway, I think it was well worth the money. And the nice thing about XLR is I have the option to upgrade and I can plug in multiple mics and you know, so I saw a friend bought the, uh, the shore, uh, what is it? There's some new fancy shore. It's not the SM57. It's the SM7B. I think it's like 400 bucks. You already have the DAC amp for playback. Oh, yeah, me too. I mean, I've got DAC amp, audio interface. I've got everything. I'm all external. You have an interface to your guitar. Well, it probably adds XLR, so just get a damn, uh, get, a, get an XLR mic. <laughs> uh, power state. Worth it. Hashtag treat yourself. Power state VP int. And this is an unsigned integer. Okay. <laughs> Interface goes to my Mac though for music, not my desktop. Well, then get another interface. I mean, these are all easy problems to solve. <laughs> if you don't treat yourself, nobody will treat yourself. That's a fact. See, my whole thing is like, I'm all about like spending money for something you're going to like use every day. You know, like I, I'm all, I'm good with that, but got to treat yourself to a clean desk. I mean, yeah, but I just have a really big desk and all the cables are tidied up behind it and stuff, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, is the power state. Power state at the bottom. May need to get a new... I can see your reaction looking around. Well, I've got a, I've got a bit of a... There's a bit of a mess back there because the Nintendo Switch is on the desk too, but otherwise, like, it's fine. So... Possible state values. Did I mess this up? state uh, I think I swapped these by accident didn't I yeah <laughs> where would I put all my stuff if I clean my desk I see people who have desks that are like completely covered in stuff and I don't do that I've got a pretty big open area here that's totally clean um, that's the way I roll but you know my monitor stands and stuff are like behind them like cables like what are you gonna do possible power state values taken from here is there really not an anchor i can click on that's ah, so annoying Bottom power there we go power states are unknown off low on but now i don't trust this anymore so this is gonna be like a negative one or something so i'm just gonna google this really quick Ah, I do not want to print. No. Why? Why is it even there? Uh, show me the source code. Put on power state. GitHub. I can't spell. Save my life. Load on power. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, you will say the blue mic stand is better if you want it up high above your monitor and aim down at you, which is how I keep mine. Gotcha. Yeah, for me, I've got a, uh, I've got a clamp on the side of my desk over there, and all the cables are run kind of tidily underneath the desk. So. And what's nice too is when I'm not using this, I can just put it way out of the way. It's not like above my monitors or anything. So, 
Why are these defined? I'm like terrible at splunking C code. It's gotta be defined somewhere. There we go. Power state. Zero, one, two, three. Okay, that's good. Unknown off low on. Power state. Okay. Power state. We are parsing it. Okay, so I think we're done. C go. Power state on. Excellent. Okay. Good, 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 good. Value parser. I think we need to add the test to this now. This is a UN32. Power state. Power state on. Power state. Uh, Dbus make variant. UN32. Power state on. Okay. Sweet, making good progress. So I go. Unknown off low on power state. I don't wanna I'm gonna keep forgetting to remove this, aren't I? Modem power state parsing. Good. Uh, yeah, I think we're probably at the point where we can move over and do some Prometheus metric stuff. Um, let's see here. So we're coming up about an hour and a half into the stream. Okay, so we're probably at about the halfway point. Let's see. Prometheus metrics. How do I want to do this? This ever okay so this passed it's just waiting for review now cool that's good um i guess we could work on the exporter a little bit uh now that we've got the ports the power state stuff like that those are all good things to export huh how do i want to export the how do i want to export the state of the modem um as a metric I feel like enums are kind of weird because, like, you could potentially return a value that's, like, you know, 1 through 8 or something with each of those values indicating, you know, some value in an enum, but that's kind of unfriendly. Um, how do people usually do that? I actually have no idea. This is something, it's a conversation I had recently, but let's see here. So Prometheus, metrics, enum. Oh, the Python library has an enum type? Really? Huh. Deadline start states equals. Oh, so it gives you the it gives you all of the possible metrics and then it just sets uh Hey, welcome. Welcome to the stream. So this just creates a metric with every label and sets them to one if it's in that state. I guess that seems reasonable to me. So we would have a we'd have a metric for every possible state and set the one to 1 1.0 where it uh uh 
where the state is active. So like if it'll be connected, it'll be indicated by 1.0 state equals connected. I don't think the Go client has an enum, does it? Yeah, the Go client doesn't expose that concept. That's strange. I guess we're I guess we're doing it this way. Python client has a few higher level things. Yeah, interesting. I guess we're doing it this way. This this seems pretty reasonable to me. So I think we're gonna do that. Anyway, uh, let's switch projects over to that. Um, close that for now. So, put that exporter. Why'd it pop up over there? There we go. Okay, back to the Prometheus exporter. So we need to export every possible state. So I guess first let's pull the latest version. Uh, cool story is actually filed a bug one time with the Python library and later realized we had just written our own library with borderline the same API, but totally fucked instead. <laughs> that sounds about right. Sounds about right. Let's close some tabs. I know some people can have like hundreds of tabs open for me. It drives me like crazy. I don't want to do that. Brian was not amused, I'm sure. Dlayer modem manager. So we need to update this, and the go module proxy might not have the new version yet, so we're going to do it manually. So go proxy direct, uh, go get dash u. Upgrade. Okay. So now we should have all the new types and such. I need to restart go, please. There we go. Okay. So how do I want to handle this? So modem power state or modem... I guess the power state is a much smaller enum, so that's probably a good place to start versus the state itself. So we'll create a metric name. Yeah, by the way, I'm using my own homegrown client here. It actually wraps the Prometheus client, but I want it... I like this because it simplifies the like building exporters and stuff and also allows you to test things easily. So nothing's perfect, but I feel pretty good about it. And then modem power state power state uh the current enumeration of power states for a modem where the value of one indicates the active state, power state. Current power state. Right, so device ID and then state. And then modem power state. So we need to collect a metric for each of the states and then indicate which one is active. So unknown off low on. So let's see here. Unknown low. Actually, so that's the constant names. But what are the? Let's see here. Low power, full power. So should I say on or full power? I guess on's probably fine. Unknown low. Unknown off low on. Or 
All right, so collect the metric where the current state, uh, let's see here. The current state is going to be switch. How do I, how do I, how do I want to match these up? I guess what I could do here is states struct. Array of structs where you have the string and then the power state, modem manager, power state. Uh, hey, what theme do you use in VS Code? I don't actually remember. I feel like it's Monokai, I think probably. Well, let me check really quick. I actually know where that's defined. Theme. Monokai, yeah. I've always liked Monokai ever since I used, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, Vim back in the day. Uh-oh. My brother, uh, my brother's back from Colorado for the weekend, so I'm gonna get to see him. Should be fun, but... He, uh, <laughs> yeah, should be an interesting time. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Go down the rabbit hole, make your own flavor. I don't think I'm, uh, artistic enough. Our state unknown. You literally do that? Nice. I feel like at one point, there was one point where I was, like, making my own CSS style sheets and stuff for things, and, like, I, I'm so far, I'm, like, so beyond, not... I don't think I have like that like artistic like talent anymore or something. Um, you fork some TextMate theme. Gotcha. The Stone Cold Man, welcome. Thank you for the follow. So unknown. Ah. Occasionally you'll hit like a keyboard shortcut and things just jump around. Uh, low. Off. Off. On. Oh, I forgot low. Probably gonna factor this out into its own function too. Um, so for each of these states, we need to export a metric and then if the current state, uh, let's see here, so plus 64, if SPS equals M power state. So the current is, F, that's the value, and then the labels are the device ID and the power state string. SS. Okay. I think this works. So if we want to test it, we can actually just run the exporter on the on the router. So stop. This is gonna alert, of course, but actually C go, C go. Okay. Uh, grep for state. Ah. So the current power state is on. Excellent. That seems to work. Kind of wonder if I should make like an enum helper in my metrics light package. That could be nice. Uh, let's see here. So funk. Um, collect power state. How do I want to do this? I want to factor this out, the switch case. So funk. So given a collection function from the metrics map, Power. 
upper state. So we have the collection function, and then we have the modem itself, right? I think. Hold on. Device identifier and power state. Okay. state c m that should work i'll cross compile or not cross compile c go list compile curl cool i'll take it i'm wondering if i could further simplify this by using a map instead maybe I don't know. I guess this is fine. Cool. Export the active power state. Value of one point zero. Ah. Cool. First eight. Seems fine. Uh, power state collects a modems power state enum metrics as an enum. This is a gauge, right? I, I made it a gauge. Yeah, it's a gauge. Okay. Cool. So power state is something we would definitely want. We can add also the other state, which was the device state, right? So. Uh, why do I keep I keep closing my wrong the wrong tabs? Empty layer modem manager. Power state the ports is the ports useful at all? I'm not actually sure it is. I mean, primary port. No, I don't think that really belongs in Prometheus. I guess. I mean, I don't know. Power state definitely, and then the modem state definitely as well. Uh, state, flex a modems, state metrics as an idiom. Yep. Case mm modem state. Modem state, state cm. Register another metric, power state, state. Uh, let's see here. Cool. Oh, I'm getting a, I knew this would happen, but I'm getting alerts that the uh, modem manager exporter has stopped running, uh, because I've got it shut down right now on my router. <laughs> Uh, people having, uh, people having conversations over Snapchat is kind of the worst. All right, let's acknowledge this notification so my phone will stop blowing up. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, power state, and now we need the modem state as well. Yeah. Device states. Uh, uh, cellular connection states. Current states. I totally called it MM. Oh, there we go. Modem state. MM modem state. Collect the state as all this. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So failed. State failed. Ah. ST. Probably a more concise way to do this, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, let's just do this. Make a bunch of copies and paste. Okay, so we got failed. Then we have unknown. Then we have locked, lowercase. And we have disabled. I'm gonna keep capitalizing these by accident. Uh, disabled. Disabling. Disabling. And what this will allow me to do is this will allow me to alert whenever my modem is like disconnected from, from the cell network, which would be nice. So if, for example, there's an outage or something. Um, and it's pretty cool. Enabling. I wasn't sure how I felt about having to run things like Network Manager and Modem Manager uh, because the rest of the interfaces on my router are not managed with those things, but Modem Manager actually seems pretty damn good. So pretty happy with that. Enabling enabled. Uh, searching registered. Uh, registered for more. Okay. Registered. Disconnecting. Connecting, connected. Connecting. Oh, connecting and connected. Okay. I feel like I don't, if M state equals the, yeah, I guess it's fine. Anyway, uh, string, string, K. I think that should work. Oops, uh, C go. And run it and curl it. Hey, check that out. All of the modem states connected, excellent. So we have a couple new metrics. Nice. Did we have one more thing? Yeah, we added the ports, but I'm not sure if we want to export the ports or not. I'm not sure that makes sense. What should I do? Hmm. Does it make sense to export the port data at all? Is there anything useful you could do with that? I guess actually you could identify the network interface. That is useful. So I do want to export that one at least. The other ones, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see here. So what kind of information does it give us? Dump the modem state. Uh, right. CDC WDM0, but that's not the interface. I definitely want to export the network interface. Is it possible for one modem to be attached to multiple interfaces? I think that's the concept of a bearer, so I'm pretty sure you can, actually. 
So what we want here is we want some way of correlating in Prometheus between the node metrics, which has things like the network interface and the modem metrics. So I want the ability to join like uh, node network receive bytes interface on the modem metrics via the port and then get the device ID. And then from there you can join on uh, other stats like LTE signal, I think. I think that would probably be the most useful uh, way to do this. So how do I want to do that? I'm just trying to think of like, I can think of ways that'll work. I'm just trying to figure out what's most idiomatic is the, is the answer here. So I think we're going to ignore the other port types and we're just going to export the network ports. So M modem network ports. Modem network port info. So this is going to tell you all of the active network ports and their names. Uh, metadata about the, let's see here. Metadata about the attach network ports for a modem. Uh, the available about the uh, attached network interface ports for a modem. I think something like that. So device ID you have as well, and then you'll have the port or interface. I guess how's Prome Prometheus probably calls this the interface, right? I would guess. Um, let's see here. Uh, good old prom lens, uh, node, network, receive, bytes, total. Device, I guess we can call it device. That seems like a good name too. I want to make it as easy as possible to join on node exporter metrics because that's where I imagine this being useful. So device is fine. Although don't we use device elsewhere here now? Well, we use device to refer to the modem, not the port. Confusing. I guess it's fine. We can document it. Note that device refers to the network interface name and not to the modem name. Device ID is the ID of our modem and the device is the network port. We're gonna export, so mm modem uh, network port info. Network port info. Uh, so how do we export this? We need to filter all of the ports for type equals, what do you call it? Um, port info CM. Copy one of these functions again. Network port info metrics. So we're going to iterate through all of the network ports and export metrics for each one that is a, hang on a sec, P, uh, M ports. So for each port, if the type is not equal to, if P type is not a network port, uh, port type net. And we continue, we skip it, and we export metrics for all of them with the device identifier and the port name. Uh, 
uh, cgo compile okay okay uh, port info excellent so you can see the oh now you can see the device equals wwp0 so that is the network device associated and that means that device is now active that port is active on the modem cool so you can join that on other metrics Actually, if we let this run for a sec, we should be able to do a little bit of Prometheus splunking to prove that works. So, uh, let's see here. The manager network port info. Yep. Okay, so you have the device. So, oh God, I can never remember how to do this. Um, plus on, <laughs> I have to look this up every single time. Um, let me take a look at my Grafana dashboards or something, see if I can find something useful here. I I do my best, but I'm just not really a PromQL expert. I end up having to look up the syntax all the time, you know. I definitely have some complicated... Okay, here we go. So, uh, node, network, receive, bytes, total. So, the bytes received on the network port. Let's do that. So... Uh, plus on, um, no, we don't want plus. We want multiplication because it's it's a, it's going to be a value of one. So we want to multiply the time series by one because that gives back the same value. So on, we're going to join on the instance and the device uh, group left with modem manager network port info. Empty query result. Um, on device there we go yeah that's what i wanted so you can see the device and then they have the net report info so now you can group left with the how do you attach more labels Don't, can't you do something like this device id right yeah so now see we, we are able to correlate um we're able to correlate between the device, the network device, it's received bytes as well as the modem. So now we can actually get the modem information so we can multiply on uh, device ID with the modem manager group left. What's this prom lens? Yes, this is prom lens, it's amazing. No one is, that's why Brian hands out those cheat sheets, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is uh, prom lens. This is a super cool tool I'm running on my server. Um, check out prom, promlens.io, I think, or promlens.io, yeah. Promlens.com. But it's also, this is a feature, uh, this is from Prom Labs, which is Julius Vols. Yeah. Yeah, check it out. This tool is awesome. Uh, I, I love this. It really helps, uh, it helped me figure out, like, the problems with that query, like, a lot faster than I would have on my own. So, uh, group left, modem manager, uh, manager, modem info. So now we can see a uh, model. So now we can tell that my Sierra Wireless MC7455 Qualcomm Reserved Snapdragon TM X7 LTEA is associated with WWP0. And we can tell that that modem is the one receiving these bytes. So this is the power of Prometheus. Like this is the power of PromQL like joins. So this is why I'm making these metrics. So. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm going to have to note this query as something potentially useful. So, uh, um, I guess I'll make a note for myself where, I don't know. I'm not going to like create a dashboard right now. I don't think it's just too finicky to do on stream, but, uh, I'm saving that query for later. Cool. I'll take it. Is this the, uh, oh yeah, it's not sending any traffic because I'm not actually like doing anything. So I rates over the past minute. Okay. Oh, that's not going to work. Is it? I have to group the whole thing like that, like this. Anyway, it works. You know, we, we were able to successfully join together three different metrics, so it works. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Um, let's let's commit what we have so far, I think, and then we'll write some tests. Probably seems like a good idea. Excuse me. Uh, only uh, export information about network ports because they can be joined with other metrics such as those from node exporter. It isn't clear that exporting AT, MBIM, etc. would be useful at this point. Good stuff, making progress. Let's write some tests. Go mod tidy. Three new metrics for my exporter. And actually, this, will, this release will have the fixed uh, timestamps as well, so I'll definitely want to do that. Um, oh, right, I should probably start back up in my router, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, stop. Let's see here. Start. Get it going again. Okay. Now it's happy. Cool. Uh, star dot go and go dot star. Auto manager exporter. Uh, sorry. Plan is five p.m. Cool, making good progress today. Uh, new metrics for. Uh, add state and port info metrics. I'm kind of a stickler about good commit messages too. Like some people are fine with like you know add stuff, and I'm I'm not. It's just not the way I roll. So how do I test this? I guess probably the easiest way is to uh, uh, potentially abstract some of the logic here so that we just export test the metrics portion and not the modem fetching stuff because this is where things get tricky and i feel like for my hd home run exporter which has similar pattern i ended up having to create quite a lot of indirection um let's let's see let's go take a look at that hd home run exporter so this is for the silicon dust hd home run which i actually don't use anymore sadly uh, it's a cool device but i don't have cable anymore so i can't use it um but I have like a pattern in that library as well where you do like for each tuner. So I need to figure out a way to get around that. One sec. Oh, I got a comment on my PR about... Mostly, um... Not sure. I guess we can we can do this on stream. One sec. I wanna before we get back too much. I wanna get this package for Nix OS, so I'll show you all what I'm seeing. So we still have dynamic user equals false, but I think we can actually have it true in this case. So I think you're right, and we can go back to using a dynamic user. Update the PR. Uh, right, so this will be easy enough. Nix OS, Nix packages. I think in this particular case, uh, we can just remove that and then it'll be good enough. Amend, push, and we're just going to rely on the CI to run the tests because I, I'm positive they'll pass. Um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, I could quickly be proven wrong.
There we go. I'm gonna run that again. Uh, yeah, excellent. Okay, back to the exporter. Yep. So, oh, right, the HD home run stuff. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So the way I did this, for each tuner. Yeah, I made an interface for the tuner and then an interface for the iterator. I don't like that, I don't think. Seems uh unnecessary. Yeah, this testing shim stuff, I don't know. I feel like it might be valid just to, uh, hmm. how do I wanna do this? I can make it so that you have a function that gets swapped out with pre-populated modem and signal and time data. And instead of iterating each modem, hmm. how do I swap this out? I don't really want to mock the whole thing again. I guess in theory, I could just test the metrics exporting parts. Um, it's kind of meh, but it would work. So given a function so this will create a function that will export metrics for a given modem, uh, given a an input timestamp modem and signal data. So we can move all of this out. Scrape, um, given a context. No, we don't need the context anymore because there's no more uh, IO to perform. We already have all the data. So given a modem, the time and the signal data modem manager signal data we could call this function and collect data right and move all of this into that function how do i want to do this I don't like either of these approaches. <laughs> it's like I either have to mock out the iterator code and then mock out the modem interface. So I have to create two interfaces and shim it all together, which gives us better test coverage, but it just feels kind of inelegant. Or I have to like do this function I'm thinking of, but then I'm only testing a fraction of the code. Maybe, maybe the, uh, I don't know. Maybe the interfaces really are the best bet. So, how do I do this? And the problem is too, is we're using these struct fields as well. Like we're calling methods on it, but also using its fields. So once you start doing that, your interface has to have all those fields. I don't like that either. Any suggestions, chat? <laughs> uh, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I think we're probably going to pursue this approach. So given a modem, a network time, and a signal export metrics, uh, roughly is what I'm thinking, I think. So scrape metrics for these things. Man, you're all throwing me under the bus. We got 30 viewers in here and nobody's got a suggestion. <laughs> so want to watch me suffer? <laughs> all right, uh, I'm just gonna go with something. We're gonna see what happens. <clears throat> So 
we're going to do this scrape the modem, the time, the signal, the metrics. We're going to factor all of this out. How do interfaces work and go? Uh, <laughs> Uh, interfaces are composition based versus you compose interfaces versus inheritance. So, um, it's yeah, it's not interfaces aren't the answer here. I don't think it would be, it'd be way too messy. Uh, what was the question? So I'm trying to figure out how I want to test this thing, but I think I I think I'm gonna pursue an option here, and we're just gonna see what happens. I I have an idea at least. Um, I don't love it, but I have an idea. So. This should probably go first. So, scrape uh, performs a single metrics collection pass for one modem and it's data. Okay, so now we can test this scrape function. It'll be easier. I mean, we're still not testing this, but ultimately the for each modem network time signal stuff, that's all tested in a different library anyway. So. This info metric wouldn't be tested though. Um, not if we do it that way. See, it's a shame it's not like a, well, oh God. I was gonna say it's a shame it's not like a network interface because I'm pretty good at swapping out like TCP servers and stuff for testing. I'm good at like making something that's good enough. Um, I guess the option here would be to swap out enough of Dbus where, or to create like a Dbus interface, but I don't think I really want to rely on Dbus for tests. Uh, <laughs> that seems, seems ill-advised. So I think we're going to roll with this. Given some input data, collect metrics, that's all we really care about anyway. So does this compile? Uh, see go. Ah, uh, stop. Curl, curl. Okay, it does. Okay, um, yeah, this is this will be good enough. We can make it work. So we're gonna test the majority of the code anyway. So that'll be good. Test.go. Package modem manager exporter. What a mouthful, right? So, I guess the, the abstraction here is slightly wrong. So at the moment we're relying on the Prometheus stuff, but the whole point of the metrics light thing, one of the reasons I wrote it is because it allows us to test using an in-memory implementation, which will be much easier. So I think probably the goal here is to decouple the Prometheus portions from this. All right, guys, just pull out all these metrics definitions. So something like, something like this. Uh, let's see here, so. Funk. Uh, register, given a metrics light interface, you register metrics on it like so. 
So let me remove all of this. Register the metrics with it. Okay. So now we can use this within our tests. So I think what we're going for here is func test metrics t testing t. So given some set of inputs, we're going to perform a single scrape collection pass. So metrics lights new memory. Uh, register the metrics on it. And then uh, now we have the ability to scrape the metrics and actually get the populated output. So we scrape given a metrics collection function. So now we need to do the const scrape. So this provides you a function that you can use to gather metrics. No errors. Uh, we scrape using metrics, the a modem, a timestamp, time Unix uh, one zero. That's fine. And then signal. So modem manager signal data. Okay, um, we're getting there. So. This will perform a single metric scrape. So now we need to trigger it. Can't remember exactly how I did this before. Do I have to collect it? No. Ah, so we call the series output, right, right, right. Okay, so series mm dot series. And we'll dump all this output. So we'll see what we have so far. Uh, nothing. Um, I guess that's to be expected because all the data is empty, right? Uh, what code is being invoked? So this is being invoked. There's just nothing to export. Oh, I'm not using dash V, am I? There we go. See, so now we can actually see all the different states and such and uh, export metrics. So it's not great. I don't love this approach, but I think ultimately this is probably better than coupling with the dbus code or the modem manager code, because this is what we care about anyway, is that given some set of inputs, such as a modem, network time state, etc. Uh, we care that that data got to us somehow and we were able to scrape it and produce valid metrics. So that's that's the goal here. So basically we're going to do a gigantic comparison now. Gigant, gigantic diff uh, want series. Unexpected time series. And uh, want is going to be a gigantic map of time series. Matrix light series. Yep. So stuff like this. I apologize for the small font size. It's just, uh, well, I guess I can make it bigger now. It'll be hard to read otherwise. So the time series we want are something like this. Now I can get rid of all the plus junk. Replace these with the constants, mm modem info. Oh yeah, we don't need the names. How do I do this elsewhere? I think I just care about the samples, the sample maps. I, I want to eliminate the name and the help strings for comparison. Right. Okay. So uh, we need to eliminate them from the time series output. Got.
for KV and got uh, K dot RV dot help empty. We're gonna clear the help strings and we're gonna clear the name. Uh, got K equals V. Clear help strings and names. Uh, metrics names and help strings from the output so we can more concisely test the sample comparisons sample data okay that's what we want so we need to provide a device id of foo something like that and now we'll see that showing up in our metrics so this is good um, let's see here. So modal manager info. Oh, there is no info metric because we don't ever collect it. That's right. So this is never collected because it's not collected within the loop. Never collected because this is a not per modem. I guess it's fine. Device ID, device ID foo. Ugh. So firmware, or I guess they're called, they're called revision rights, uh, 2020.07.17. It's fine. 2020.07.17. The equipment identifier, or the IMEI, we're just going to call uh, dead beef. Just some hex junk, you know. Dead beef. And then the model is test modem. Test mode on. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So now we need to export its power states, which is unknown currently, and then the LTE signal state as well, right? And then the network timestamp one. Yeah. So this one's easy at least. Uh, network timestamp seconds. So our coverage now is, well, better than it was for sure. I'll take it, I suppose. So we want to exercise lots of different cases here. Uh, we need to export LTE signal data as well. Yes, that's true. Uh, and then we need Port info, so we need to specify some ports. So, I guess I'm gonna. Is there a short? Is there a keyboard shortcut in VS Code for sorting lines? I can never remember. Uh, ah, what did I just do? It's not my intent. Hey, I got merged. Sweet. Cool. So now, whenever NixOS Unstable is updated, I can actually use this and delete my own module, which is great. Uh, so, status uh, nixos.org, right? Unstable is, unstable small is three hours old. Okay, so probably later today, but no big deal. Um, anyway. Ports, right. Oh yeah, I wanted to sort this data. How do I do that? Is there a command sort? Ah, yes, excellent. Love it. Uh, Modem manager port. So we're going to have probably an AT port here and then like a network. Well, I guess just a network port for now. So name, uh, WAN0, type, port type. Shifto, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Net. So this is now a network port, so now there's a metric exposed about it, which is great. That's what we want. So uh, steal this. Modem info, modem network, timestamp. Network port info. Cool. Good stuff, good stuff. Making progress. Oh. And I'm tired. 
Got a long day ahead. <laughs> Let's see. What's next? So we can do the power state. That seems like a good idea. Um, power state. Uh, on. On. I'll say it's on. What's nice about this, the Go CNP package too, is it provides this nice output that I can literally copy and paste into my tests. So I just got to remove the, the diff signs, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, multi cursor magic, get rid of it all, and we're good. Um, MM power state. There we go. Good. And now we need LTE data, which we haven't populated yet, and then we need the modem state as well. So cool. What time is it? 2.15. Okay. About another 45 minutes. And then when Large Data Bank hops online, we'll send him a raid. It'll be fun. Oh, too many states in here. Interesting. Okay. Um, MM modem state. And the state is going to be connected. Great. Uh, now we need to populate some LTE signal data. Okay. Um, I see people liked my tweet about time zones. <laughs> time zones, my one true enemy. It's true. Cool. Don't forget encoding. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, every time I run into like a somebody tries to like do like a clever encoding i'm just like why don't you just use like tlv like type length value it's all you need you know have your small fixed header and then tlv options like ndp is a perfectly designed protocol you get stuff like arp that's just this whole monstrosity or dhcp v4 especially like yikes you know uh let's pull some data off my modem let's see what are the current stats probably terrible <laughs> but uh Let's see what modem manager exporter says. So 9539 LTE signal. Yeah, those are all pretty bad. Uh, negative 116, negative 17. RSRP is negative 116. Yikes. Uh, LTE is a struct. We have to do the, does that work? No way. No, oh, I would be so happy, but this is the problem with the anonymous structs is to construct them. You actually have to do this pain in the ass uh, stuff. So I think probably what I'll do instead is do uh, ver s manager signal uh, s l t e r s r p equals. Let's see here. Negative 116, negative 17, negative 116, SLTE, SRQ, negative 17, negative 81, SLTE, RSSI, RSSI equals negative, I already forgot it, uh, negative 81, and the SNR is 1, SLTE, SNR equals 1, excellent. Okay, um, that worked. Now we get the LTE metrics. Um, modem signal, modem state. Let's add it down here, it'll be fine. Uh, I'm sure you've worked with plenty of low-level programming newbies. What's one mistake you see often? It's a good question. I guess low-level in what sense? So, hmm. I think that, like, if you're doing, like, 
I think if you're doing like parsing stuff like this, like whenever you're parsing some kind of network protocol or bytes or whatever else, like in Go especially, people often forget bounce checks or they don't run a fuzzer. So you run up, you end up with like pretty bad problems in like your parsers and stuff. So that's definitely something you have to watch out for. Um, hmm. Working with newbies. These days, everyone I work with is pretty senior, so it's it's a little bit of a different scenario, but I think something I see a lot from newbies especially is writing code that's hard to test, and I mean, I guess I kind of trap myself into that hole here with the way this is written, uh, unfortunately, because it relies on things like debus. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we all make mistakes, right? Like, even veterans make mistakes, unfortunately. <laughs> But I try to learn from them and I try to get better every day. So, sorry, PDBM. What was this before? I already forgot. RSRQ. This completion is really bad right now. SNR. Okay. Um, yeah, let's put these on their own lines. Just a little easier to read that way, I think. Nothing wrong with nothing wrong with having more lines on the page. Cool. So now we have test coverage. That's good. Um, what's what's going on here? This metric is not per. Oh no. I guess we probably should have a non-network port as well so we can skip it. TY USB. Scrape metrics into memory using canned data so we can Pair against known outputs. Easy enough. Okay, cool. Register registers the exporters metrics with the input metrics interface. Yeah, it's funny because I just got this in a Nix OS and I already want to uh, update it. I guess we can probably do that too. 223. Hmm. How y'all doing today? Everybody having a good Friday? This is why you don't upstream packages. Yeah. <laughs> right. What's up, Taryn? Well, I upstream because I don't want to uh, have to. Uh, I don't want to have to keep my own package out of tree. Oh, interesting. Uh, let me rephrase, generalize my question. I've never really worked with a compiled language, and I would like to start somewhere. Also, contribute to open source projects that I still love to use. Excellent. From a top-down view, it looks like there are so many things to learn. I don't even know which way to go after learning the language. Hmm. Well, I mean, ultimately, like. If you're interested in Go in particular, I've got some Go resources right there, but I think ultimately what works best for me is to learn a little bit and then find a problem to solve. Like if there's something I want to do, in the case of like Go, like a good project could be creating an HTTP API. It's like pretty much everybody's first Go project. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I tend to build things that like help me 
you know, gather metrics from devices in my house or make my life easier. Uh, I write network services to run on my modem or my router and stuff like that. Um, just depends, you know. I think ultimately having a problem you want to solve is the key. Like for me, that is what makes the knowledge really stick. Cool. I'm good with this. Tidy. Uh, let's see here. Ginger exporter. Add tests. Yay. It has tests. And now I need to tag a new release so I can get it pushed into NixOS as well. Um, hmm. Okay, what's next? What do we want to do for the next, uh, I don't know, half hour or so? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what else could be useful. I can update the NixOS package, but... Mode uh, manager. I don't know why VS Code pops up over there. It's so strange. I feel like it should always pop up in this part of my screen and just doesn't. It pops up on the third monitor instead. I wonder if there's any other data I care about that I want to export. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> What's going on? One sec. What other fields should I parse from this, I wonder? Uh, hey, welcome. Welcome to the stream. I apologize, I'm running out of stuff to do. <laughs> I guess we could parse more data. Um, what else was there? There was like the drivers and stuff, right? You have a list of projects to work on. Yeah, I do too, actually. But I just, uh, actually, that reminds me. Um, I've got plenty of projects to work on. We did this. Sweet. Add secure boot to NixOS. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work. I do not understand such things. This arcane, arcane magic, you know. Man, we're coming up on 400 followers. That's pretty good. I guess people are enjoying these streams, huh? Uh, right. What else can we fetch from this thing?
Print F. Can I get rid of the timestamps? There we go. Okay. So this is the data we can fetch now. I really want to start looking into the sim and the bearer interfaces, but I don't know if we have time to do that today. Um, let's see. Let me pull up something. I guess maybe we do. Maybe we can do one of them. Bearers, sims, SMS calls. So the bearer gives you things like the IP information, stats. Oh, hell yeah. This looks useful. All right, let's look at bearers. Let's do that. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Crack myself up. Uh, so we need to get the bearers for each modem. Um, these are all properties, right? We can just call get all on the bearer interface. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So basically we're going to steal this modem code and end up duplicating it. This is getting too big. I'm going to have to split this up into separate files. So, uh, bearer, um, for now, return an empty interface and an error because we don't have this written yet. Uh, it's no longer bottom zero, it's now bearer. So bearer. I think this will work roughly. Uh, let's see here. So C bearer zero, context zero. Bearer zero. Okay. There we go. Nice. So you can actually see the uh, information being configured here. So things like the IP config, the DNS servers, MTU. It's good. Duration, 2339. That must be since the modem reset, maybe? The APN. Yeah, this looks this looks useful. So start parsing that out, I suppose. Um, hmm. How many bearers can the... So it can have multiple. So I guess we can make it so that way the, the modem provides you links to its bearers. Because it's already linked there. So we can just query it based on the information. Hmm. Let's see... So maybe this becomes a method of the modem type instead of the client. Modem bearer, okay. So the modem will know its bearers because it has the object paths already. So we need to parse those. So I guess for now, let's leave this alone. So we need to parse a string object. So we need to parse a string slice but the problem is they're not strings, they're the damn object path type, which is a little bit of a nuisance, but we can make it work. Uh, object path. Something like this, so dbus object path, yeah. Object paths parses the value as a slice of as a slice of paths. cool nil object path value is not of type an object path slice dbus object path nil OP, cool, object paths. So now we can get all of all the bearers for the modem and then we can use those to actually iterate over the bearers themselves and fetch stats. I think I probably won't bother taking a release. I'll probably just leave it as is for now. Um, 
and then when I get back from vacation and such, we can uh, do more updates. So we actually need to parse the bearers now. Um, vacation. Yeah, I'll be. Uh, I'm not streaming again until uh, August probably. So a couple weeks. Bearers equals object paths. Um, hmm. going out to the lake uh, yes actually it should be fun bearer paths bearer objects bearer how do I want to do this bearer paths because we're going to have a bearers method as well nice I'm jelly yeah it should be a lot of fun I'm excited yeah Lake Michigan is uh, super dope so Paths is debus object path. Is this pass yet? No, it's not going to because we need to do this. All right, let's see here. Um, string object path. Object paths, there we go. And then we write tests in here. So, errors, uh, debus. So bearer zero, right? Yeah. Cool. So that should work, I would think. Um, let's see. It does, excellent, okay. So now that we have the bearer paths, we can actually do the bearers themselves. We can start fetching those. Uh, let's see here, so. Bearers. Is this where I wanna do like a for each function as well, like for each bearer? Um, I guess for now, we'll, hmm. How do we want to do this? I guess I should probably try and keep the API consistent where possible. So the modem has a bearer method. You specify index zero or similar. Bearer struct. So I guess we'll see if the bearer belongs to the modem before we uh, fetch anything. Well, is there really a value here in allowing the client to specify an index? I feel like probably not. I mean, I, I guess I wonder if there's any reason they'd want to fetch stats for just one of the bearers or something, like assuming your modem supports multiple. Is there value of giving them an index here or do we just always make an iterative, iterative call? Um, I think I might just make the call right now that we're just going to do bearers or something like that. So. Specify the object path, the bearer interface. 
Make an array of pointers to bearers, zero, when, m, bearer paths. Return bearer code. And there's gonna to need to be some parsing code as well, which we haven't written yet, so that's okay. Uh, Arn 4 v I, I apologize. I'm not sure if I caught your follow, but thank you. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. I may have been uh, not paying attention. Bearers. There we go. Getting there. Okay, cool. That works. So you've got the modem manager client, which has a modem. And then when you get a modem, you can fetch its bearers. And then for each bearer, you'll be able to invoke more methods and such too. So, okay. So we have things like the properties map, which we just cleared from the screen. There we go. So bearer type. What does that mean? Interesting. Uh, IPv4, v6, stats. Definitely want stats. Unsigned 64-bit integer value. Yes, this is where we're going to start having the bigger integers, it looks like. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Let me check. Uh, I got a message about something I want to share if I can. But let me see right here really quick. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I was sent a, I was sent a link. So this, uh, it appears that GopherCon US is going to be virtual this year, which I guess is a good thing. I think ultimately a lot of us kind of predicted it would be this way. Uh, I've been to GopherCon every year since its inception. So I'm pretty disappointed that, uh, can't go this year, you know, I make it virtual, but yeah, interesting. I guess probably for the best, ultimately, like a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable flying or wouldn't be safe. Um, gotcha. Well, I guess I, uh, I guess I don't need to book a plane or anything. <laughs> so cool. Interesting stuff. Uh, live conference. It's fine. We can virtually hang out. Yeah. Right. Time to cancel my flight though. Yeah. I, I didn't bother booking a flight. I, uh, I kind of figured this was coming, but Changes tickets or hotel reservations. Please give the conference team reach out to you directly. Yeah. I do already have a ticket, but I, hmm, you booked yours before COVID. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Interesting times we're living in, you know, We do have the network interface in here. Connected network interface, v4 config, v6 config, method, MTU, prefix. Oh, I am getting a slash 64. Interesting. I was actually trying to figure out my IPv6 situation. So they're giving me an entire slash 64 so I can delegate out addresses from that 64. Um, I haven't set that up yet, but it's good to know that I can. Thanks for the heads up. Cool, cool. <laughs> I wonder what a large data bank is going to be streaming today. I'm looking forward to it. I'm starting to feel the brain fry a little bit, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, let's tidy this up a little bit more and see see if we can get anything uh, committed today. So we're going to remove this for the time being. Okay, so this gives us all the bearer paths. Uh, let's see here. The problem is now is that the, the client is able to manipulate that slice, so that could mess with our code a little bit. Hmm... I kind of wonder if I should unexport this or make an unexported copy or something. So that way the caller can't uh, mess with it. I feel like that's probably a good safety measure. Um, let's see here. I guess, do I even need to expose this to the caller, right? Maybe I don't. Maybe, I guess I don't really see how that'd be useful for them. So maybe I'll just leave it unexported. Un yeah, excuse me. Where's that code I just, I, oh, I just wiped out all the, uh, I gotta go back because I cleared the, I cleared the code from my clipboard. It's so annoying. I have a bad habit of doing stuff like that. Uh, anyway, Renrock, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. So the bearers are going to be unexported because there's nothing you can really do with the object path, and I'd rather hide the debuss concepts if I can anyway. So seems like a good idea. Okay, there we go. Let's do a git add partial. We'll remove this really quick and we'll add the client code. I think I still messed it up, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. No, no, yes. There we go. Object paths, value parser, bearer zero. But see, now that doesn't do us any good, huh? We're gonna need to write a slightly different test for this, I think, because the test won't pass. Uh, go test dash v. Or I guess I could just ignore one exported. Ignore fields, modem. Let's see. I think this will work, right? Oh, allow unexported. Yucky. Gotta set up the right options to make it cooperate with us. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. 
ignore the uh, internal client, but allow comparison other fields such as bearers. There we go. Test. Okay, now we can commit this. Uh, Moda manager, initial bearer, modem bearer parsing. Okay, uh, 250. Hmm. Let's see what's going on. No large data bank yet. I guess I think he starts at three, so soon. Very soon you'll be rid of me. <laughs> Which would be good, because I'm getting kind of tired. Ugh. Streaming is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of tiring. It's more tiring than you think it would be, just like sitting here talking and stuff, you know? But I guess it's because I'm trying to, you know, use my entire thought process like out loud as well as, uh, like I'm basically trying to think out loud the entire time, which gets tiring. Uh, let's see, client. So now we have the bearer parsing code. So, uh, the index is actually the last element of the path, right? Can't even imagine always talking. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's both easier than you'd think and harder at the same time. It really just depends. Um, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty social person anyway, so it's not really like difficult for me to like keep it up. But it gets tiring after a while for sure. Uh, open the. Catch all of the properties from the bearers associated with this modem. Okay. Um, now the the path is the the last element of the path is the index, right? So I have to trim that off if I wanna. Yeah. So file path base, I think would work, or path base. You're the op you're completely otherwise. I barely talk for two months. I have problems to even speak fluently. Wow. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Uh, stirconf a two i path base op right. I think that's what I want. If error uh, bs append bs with a bearer with the index. Um, IDX. String. Stupid types. Okay. Command. Motive manager. There we go. That works. Uh, let's see here. Note the bearers index and the struct by fetching that index from the tail from the last element of the dbus object path. Yep. Great. Uh, connected is a boolean. So I guess we could have we could have like boolean parsing or something like. Seems like a good idea. Connected pool. Probably basically wrap up this and then send large databank a raid whenever he is around. <laughs> oh, I can do this, can I? A.
False. False. Yeah. Got booleans now. Getting into the API as well. All kinds of fun, huh? Okay. Uh, test pass. Good. As expected, but... So, let's see here. I think we're probably going to have the similar pattern to the modem where we have a parsing function. Um, index, index, C, C. It's going to need a client as well. So, it's the exact same pattern, actually. IDX. Uh, B is now a bearer which will also have an internal client because we're eventually going to be able to call methods on it as well. Parse the property set. Do the bearer. Yeah, this needs to be multiple files now. It's getting kind of nasty, but. <laughs> so the fields here we care about things like connected, right? So case connected. Uh, B connected equals the Boolean value. Error parsing. There we go. To the bearers fields. Yep. Okay. Uh, that should work, I think. We should now see the bearer is connected in our code. So. Excellent. There we go. It lives. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna need the definition from the from here. So bearer interface. Where? Oh, here we go. Bearer can be used to get the modem into a connected state. Okay. A bearer. Uh, bearer can be used to get the modem into a connected state. A bearer is. Bearer handles the connection status of a modem. Cellular connection state of a modem. There we go. Uh, bearers returns all of the bearers for a given modem or a modem. I need to write a test, but we're basically out of time. Let's see here. Yeah, I do want to write a test for this, but I'm not sure if we're going to get to that today. I suspect not. So I guess now the, the play here is going to be to construct a very similar test that verifies against the bearer interface. Hey, large data bank is now streaming science and technology. Perfect. <laughs> that means I'm off the hook. So, uh, hey. Uh, this has been a good. It's been a good stream. I'm getting kind of tired and stuff. I think uh, now is a good time to call it. So we're gonna send Large Data Bank a raid. Uh, I suspect he probably won't be started for a few more minutes, but he will appreciate us. Uh, Large Data Bank is another ghost streamer. He works on CockroachDB, so probably some pretty cool stuff. So we're gonna send him a raid. 
uh yeah thank you all so much for hanging out i appreciate it i appreciate it a lot um let's see here sorry twitch.tv yeah thanks for hanging out with me i appreciate it uh we're gonna have a good time for sure so uh wait he's offline what's going on there we go okay yeah, he's getting started up. So uh, yeah, thank you all for hanging out. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to send Large Data Bank a raid. Yeah, no problem. Always happy to stream. Always happy to uh, share knowledge. Uh, why can't I... Channels you follow. Let me refresh the UI really quick. Must be some caching. There we go. Alrighty. We're going to send him a raid. So hey, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in August. I will be streaming again in August. So yeah, I'll see you all later. Bye now.